no man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, may your name alone be praised. Great Jehovah, great. up those hands and worship great in my sin
Mere most Mashanda katele prekere mbreka sata bade Laka pashi teke lembreke reba yanda katalaba Maseke parakashi kaye Osinzi wenda Somebody open your heart and worship Jesus is here
What is life without your presence, God? What is life without you, Jesus? What is gain and what is profit without you, O oh Lord? We worship you, Jesus. Somebody worship the Lord. We are not in a hurry. Masala bakatalamba da 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody give a mighty, mighty hand clap to Jesus. Not like that. <laughs> Somebody give a mighty, mighty hand clap to Jesus. Hasn't he been good to you? Somebody give the Lord a mighty, mighty hand clap. Not like that. Give him a clap offering. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You may please take your seats. Thank you very much, choir. Thank you. You know, to some people, worship is foolishness. And to others, it is the way of life. You need Jesus. There's pleasures evermore. Praise the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Please greet your neighbor on the right. Greet your neighbor on the left. Please, for me, okay. Greet your neighbor on the right. Greet your neighbor on the left. Tell them that they are welcome and welcome and very much welcome to this service of the day. Praise the Lord Jesus. I'm very happy and honored to stand before you today. <laughs> I love you with all of my heart. Only God knows how. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm so excited and delighted this day because just the way you feel expectant is also the way I feel expectant. Praise the Lord. And I'm happy and I'm grateful to God for such a people, brothers and sisters in Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Without going to the word, without, uh, I wouldn't like, like to fast rush to the scriptures without honoring my father apostle grace lubega is that how you clap for somebody that has fed you the word is that how you clap for somebody that has fed you really i'm not looking at you Somebody raise those hands and let's just thank and worship the Lord for our man of God, Apostle Grace Lubega. And for the great things that, that he laid his life down that, that we may come this far. Praise the Lord. I remember when we were in for COVID, he was teaching the word every other Thursday, every other Sunday. And by those things we were sustained. By those things we were kept. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So give a mighty, mighty hand clap for the father of the house. Apostle Grace Lubega, thank you very much for the opportunity, sir. I'm so humbled and honored. And in the house, we also have our mother, who I would like to honor. <laughs> Mama, thank you so much for the sacrifices and the labors of love. And in the house, we also have our pastors who I would like to honor. And all of you that came, our parents, all protocol observes, ministered of ministers, various ministers of the word of God, all of you that are represented here, thank you so much, all of you that came. I'm so honored and humbled to stand before you today. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And after all that, you and me, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Without any further ado, could we please go to the word? Okay. Jeremiah 29, 11. Common scripture. Praise the Lord Jesus. Yes. The Bible says, for I know. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell them, I know. This is God speaking. Praise the Lord Jesus. And this is what he says. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Praise the Lord Jesus. There are other versions which say, For I know the plans which I have for you, declares the Lord, to give you hope and to give you a future. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But this one intrigued me. It says, for I know, meaning God knows. <laughs> it says, I know. Let me tell you, there's no thought that God bears about you that he is, not, he is not partnered to it. He knows it. You know, when we, are, when we are in the earthly plane, human beings, we think very many things and they're just passing thoughts. Even some you're like, hey, why did I think about that? They are just passing thoughts. You think about someone, they are just passing thoughts. That is not about God concerning you. When it comes to you, he says, I know. I know the thoughts. It means you have a certain place of, of love in his heart. You have a certain room of intimacy with him. You have a certain moment. For him to think about you is a certain moment he has set for himself. And he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord of hosts. Thoughts of peace. Now, when I was doing my study, I searched out the meaning of that peace in this very particular scripture. It means something. It means prosperity. It means wholeness. It means increase. It means... It means higher going higher and higher so god is trying to say something he's saying i know the thoughts that i have for you thoughts of prosperity thoughts of wealth thoughts of wholeness in health actually there's another version which says thoughts of soundness in the body praise the lord he says thoughts of peace thoughts of prosperity and then he says not of evil and when I looked at the evil, it means failure, distraughtness, struggle. Name them. He says, I do not have those thoughts concerning you. Those ones I don't have about you. But the ones that I have you are this beautiful. My God, allow me to just drop to my Hebrew Greek and I, I read for you. I feel that somebody is still beginning and saying, hmm. God means, ah, no, let me read for you. Let me read for you. I can just go there in a minute. Give me a minute. Uh, thank you for patience. This is what the Bible says. Uh, thank you for patience. Thank you for patience. It says this. Thoughts of peace means completeness. Thoughts of completeness. Thoughts of soundness. Thoughts of, com thoughts of safety. Thoughts of, thoughts of peace, quiet, and tranquility. Thoughts of contentment. Yay. Praise the Lord. Those are the ones that God has towards you. So you could be there. You're going through a situation. You're like, oh, I don't know why my heart is disturbed. I don't know why this thing's happening. God is saying, my thoughts concerning you are peace. They are peace. Regardless of what you're facing right now, I'm not seeing the situation around you. I'm seeing that my thoughts towards you are thoughts of peace. Let me tell you one thing. There is nothing that God can think and imagine and intend and will towards you. And it refuses to come to pass. Unless you just stand there and say, God, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible says something. That even when we are faithless, he is faithful. He abides faithful. God does not do because you're doing. He does not give because you're giving.
praise the Lord Jesus. If we go like that, then we, ha we, we, we have not yet understood the grace. The Bible says, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. <laughs> oh dear God, somebody is not yet there. Praise the Lord. Now, when God was thinking these thoughts towards you, he did something in the book of Romans 5.1 I want to show you. Romans 5.1 I want to show you. It says that you are justified by faith. Yeah? The Bible says, therefore being justified by faith, you have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Most of the times when we were in our different parts in trying to find out who God really is, we tried many things. But you notice when we bumped into religion, the first thing religion wants to prove to you is that you're too separate from God and that God is not at peace with you. So you are repenting, you are doing all those things just to appease God, to have a place in his heart. But listen, he could not be thinking of thoughts towards peace, of peace towards you, when he has not put that nature in the inside of you, when he has not put character in the inside of you, that character that is birthed by the Spirit of God, according to Galatians 5.22, called peace. And how did you enter that peace? By faith. You are justified by faith. When you are justified by faith, you entered the realm with peace. Peace with God. Somebody touch your heart and say, I am at peace with God. Let's read this scripture in the Amplified Version. Romans 5.1, Amplified. It says, therefore, since we are justified, acquitted, declared righteous, and given... Are you seeing? Are you seeing? Are you seeing? I'm trying to give you God's thoughts towards you. Listen, he says, since we are justified, acquitted, declared righteous, and given a right standing with God through what? Let us grab the fact that we have the peace. Hey, somebody. Let us grab the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation to hold and to enjoy. To enjoy peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. The peace is to enjoy. <laughs> I told you, his thoughts towards you are thought of what? Prosperity, wholeness, goodness and when he did that he introduced you into the realm of peace with him the realm of peace with god is that there is nothing that you can do that can separate you from the love that he has for you nothing nothing think it imagine it it is not there praise the lord jesus christ that is why when you go to the book of Romans 10, 15, you notice one thing, that even the gospel that we are given, that God gave us, it is called the good news of peace. The gospel of peace. The Bible says, how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of what? If it does not minister peace, if it does not manufacture peace in your life, that Christ died for. Praise the Lord. If it does not do what? Manufacture peace. If it does not help you to understand that you are one with him, that you are called to enjoy that oneness, that you are called to, to you are called in that place not because of anything, but by your faith, it is not the gospel of peace. It is not God's gospel. Sounds tough, right? Praise the Lord Jesus. It is not the gospel of what? And I want to let you know one thing. That that place where God introduced you, that that is the place of peace, is not a place for everyone. <laughs> Somebody looked around, around and said, wow. It is not for everyone. That is why when you go to a book like Isaiah 48, 22, it says something so strange. That the wicked, hmm? Huh? There is no peace for them. There is no peace for who? When you go to Romans 3, you also notice that Paul was talking about the wicked and he said, 
they have forsaken the way of peace. There's no peace for them. Praise the Lord. When you go to another scripture, the Lord says something. He says, is it Proverbs 28? That the wicked run even when there's nothing chasing them. No peace. They flee when no, one, no man pursueth. Read on the message. <laughs> it says, the wicked are edgy with guilt. Ready to run off even when no one's after them. Why is the guilt there? They have not entered into the realm of being justified by faith. They have not entered into the realm called righteousness. They have not come into the realm called oneness with God. So they flee. Let's go back to that scripture. It says, let's go to the KJV. It says, the wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous, they are as bold. Mm. A man of peace and a man of boldness is the righteous man. A man at peace with God is the man that is, carries that boldness. Praise the Lord. But the Bible has told you, for as much as someone is wicked, watch them. There's no peace. They always sit there, they're like, hey, I don't know what's going to happen. Hey, uh, no peace. Even when they go and create a situation of peace, a situation of a lack of peace will be introduced to them. Praise the Lord. Why? Because peace ceases to be, it ceases to be a situation or a surrounding that you create because you live on top of a certain hill D. And when you're on top of that hill, you can see cool waters. It ceases to be that. Praise the Lord Jesus. But it is that place of oneness with God. That place where God has these thoughts of beauty towards me. And not only does he think of them, but he does what? He fulfills them. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Now, I'd like us to check the book of Isaiah 32, 17, 18. I want to show you something beautiful. The Bible says, and the work of righteousness, you are not only righteous, but righteousness in the inside of you as the nature of God has a work. God has defined you the work. It says, and the work of righteousness shall be what? Peace. If you are righteous, your qualification is peace. Because when you start to understand the righteousness of God, you are walking in it. You have applied yourself in it. You have yielded to the righteousness of God as the nature in the inside of you. It starts to work something. And that thing is called what? Peace. And this is what the Bible says. And the effect of, the, of righteousness quietness and assurance forever not only does righteousness have its work in the inside of you but it has effects if there was a war here you will see by the effects of the war you will see the effects you will see things turned upside down every place thrown about because there was a war here the effects but the bible is saying there's something as the effect of what righteousness what is it quietness and what quietness and what quietness and assurance forever why does this scripture say this way it says this way because most of the times when you're going through times through hard times and there are turbulence in your heart and you feel oh god i don't know why i'm not at peace why is it that this is not working? Why is it that this is not going the right way? It is because of something. The devil is trying to steal something called assurance. What is assurance? Assurance is your confidence in God. Your confidence to the things that he spoke to you about. Your confidence because of how you gave yourself to him. So what does the devil come to do? He comes to create all those turbulence around you that you may lose your confidence in Christ. 
That's why when you go to Hebrews, it says, do not lose that confidence. Why? It is of a great recompense. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Is it Hebrews 10, 35? Don't lose that confidence. The Bible says, cast not away therefore your, don't cast it. Why? Because in the inside of you, because you are the, rich, the righteousness of God, you are fashioned for peace. You just don't know. That's why when God is looking at you, his thoughts towards you are peace. Even when for you, you feel things are peaceless. God is like, my God, when I look at you, I just see peace. I just see peace. So, cast not away that confidence. Don't cast it away. How do, you, how do you stay without casting it away? You allow the work of righteousness. You allow the effect of righteousness. Are you the righteousness of God? Allow it. The more you do, the Bible says, you will carry that quietness and assurance forever. Not for some time forever praise the lord jesus christ this is the very confidence that david had listen to me how can someone write a scripture like this psalms 46 verse 1 how can someone write something like this i want to show you listen he says god is our refuge and what a very present help in what verse 2 therefore we will not fear Though the earth be removed. Eh? Listen to this man. He says, we will not fear though the earth be removed. And though mountains are cast into the, uh, to the midst of the sea. Guys, have you ever imagined a life where the earth is removed? And someone is telling you, I'll not fear. I won't fear. I won't fear. I have greater things to look at. God, God. It says, verse 3, it says, Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the sweat. Guys, I have that, how do they call it? Pictorial imagination. When I read those scriptures, me already see mountains shaking. And I can, I can start to imagine what is happening to a, to a carnal man. He has given you his place. He's trying to tell you I'm not that carnal. Praise the Lord. He's saying, verse 4, he says, no, verse 3, please. Verse 3, he says, though the waters there are off row and be troubled, though things are falling left, right, center, though the mountains shake, whatever it is, though it shakes, verse 4, there is a river. There is a river. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. You are the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the most. There is a river, be still. There is a river. Praise the Lord. How would you advise such a man when he's going through a turmoil? He's telling you, Gwe, I know it is the earth that even holds me when I'm walking. I know it is this, the ground on which I step. But even if that ground is plucked off my feet, I will walk on the air because I know, I know, I know, I know. His life is not shaken by perilous times. His mind is made up. Why? He knows the river, but there is a river. There is a river that makes glad the streams of God. This is the reason as to why God never wants you at any moment to carry sorrow in your heart. Praise the Lord Jesus. Let's go to Nehemiah 8.10 and i show you something. Let me show you something in Nehemiah 8.10. It says, Then he said unto them, Go your way. Eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom is, is nothing prepared. For this is the day unto our Lord. Neither be you sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't be sad. 
Don't be cast down. When you go to the Hebrew Greek, that rendering of sorry, what it means there, it means do not manufacture. Do not create situations of sorrow. Don't do it. Praise the Lord. Why? For the joy of the Lord is your strength. His joy is your strength. Praise the Lord Jesus. So regardless of what it is, eh? even the mountains, if they want to shake, whatever it is that can happen, you are held by the thoughts of peace that God carries towards you. You are held by those thoughts that are not thoughts of evil. When he sees you, he sees, oh my God. I've remembered a certain scripture. Hosea 14. I hope I'm accurate. Hosea 14 verse 9. Listen. Listen. This is what the Bible says. Who is wise? And he shall understand these things. Prudent. And he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right. And the just shall walk in them. But the transgressors shall fall therein. Let me tell you. Because of the nature of righteousness that you carry in the inside of you. Every time you find yourself in a situation that is overwhelming. God is dancing. He's like this. Why? Because he is imagining what his nature in the inside of you can do to that situation. That, it was, that is what it means. To walk in the ways of God. He looks at the situation and he's wondering. Why don't you partner with me? Why? Because for me when the enemies are falling into derision. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 2. I laugh. I am laughing. Why don't you laugh at that situation? Why don't you mock that situation? Why? Because he ordained you to walk in his ways. Walking in the ways of the Lord means whatever it is in the ability of God to do to any situation, you can do it. You can do it. That is what it means to have the righteousness of God. You are as right as God is right. If it is thoughts, you carry his thoughts. If it is the mind, the Bible says we have the mind which is of Christ Jesus. What can't you do? Praise the Lord Jesus. The Bible says that the sufficiency is not of us. Hey, if you're still there doubting that, hey, what, what? The Bible says that the sufficient is not of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but the sufficiency is of God. You carry the weight of God. You carry the sufficiency of God. If there be anything called strength, you carry the strength of God. I came today to let you know one thing. You are not separate from God. You entered a certain oneness with him. And that is our place for fellowship. Praise the Lord Jesus. Paul talks about the fellowship. That our fellowship is with God. You cannot fellowship with a person you don't carry a oneness with. Sorry, he only allowed that oneness. Listen, the Bible says that that which we have seen and had declare we unto you. That you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father. And who? I like the one in 1 Corinthians. Hmm? Your fellowship is with the Father and with, his, and with his Son. Can you imagine? You are not separate entities. Listen to this. Listen to this. The Bible is saying God is what? God is faithful by whom you were called unto the faith. Hey, my God. Somebody is not understanding their calling. The Bible says God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
You were called into it. You did not walk into it. You did not break yourself for it. You do not fast a hundred years for it. You do not cry until your, your lips are white for it. He says you are called unto it, meaning you belong. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Guys, most of the times I noticed in my life that most of the times when I got into a situation where there was a certain peace that was not working, it was only because I had not fully come to the understanding of what righteousness truly really means. Praise the Lord Jesus. See the things that God has done for you. You're not alone. Praise the Lord Jesus. You are not alone. <laughs> There's a certain place in Proverbs 8 I was reading. And the Bible states, it's talking about wisdom. And it talks about wisdom. And the, and the wisdom in that Bible, in, in the word is saying that I was with God. I was with him when the foundations of the earth were being fashioned. Hey, it, this is it. It says, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, where was I? Verse 30. I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Verse 31. Rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delight was in the sons, my delight. My God, what a wisdom. Praise the Lord. What is that situation that you're looking at right now? Somebody will say, Mama, my body is failing. Listen, if you are the righteousness of God, the Bible says, Blessed be God that forgives your iniquities. <laughs> oh, God. He forgives your iniquities. When he is done forgiving your iniquities, what does he do? He heals all your diseases. Psalms, one, Psalms 103 verse 3 says, Who forgiveth all your iniquities? Who healeth all that? Was your iniquity forgiven? Was your sin forgiven? Hey, somebody. Do you believe that your sins were forgiven? Do you believe that your iniquities were forgiven? Yes. That is the same way that you must believe that all your diseases were healed, not will be healed. Not will be healed. That's strong you're saying, yes. That's what, that's what you should be saying when they tell you, oh, this is trouble in your body. Say, my sins were forgiven. The guarantee that your body is whole, the guarantee that your body was brought to a certain perfection is that your sins were forgiven. Praise the Lord. If your sins were forgiven you, my God, don't permit anything to enter in that body to trouble it. Don't permit it. Don't permit it. Tell the devil, I am born again. My sins were forgiven. My iniquities were forgiven. The life of God is in the inside of me. Simple statements like that will deliver you from hospital doors. Praise the Lord Jesus. Tell somebody the work of righteousness. I am at peace. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't permit it. Don't allow it. <laughs> that is why you notice one thing. That now, as we are growing every day, hmm, you're increasing. You're increasing in knowledge. You're increasing in wisdom. Whatever it is that is happening to you. There are those that just joined this ministry a few days ago. Some of you joined this ministry on Sunday. Some of you have just joined. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ you will start to notice one thing, that the more you sit in the word, that the more you're feeding in the word, the more your mind is getting renewed. 
And to the degree that your mind is getting renewed is to the degree that you start to manifest these things. So be at peace. Praise the Lord Jesus. Leave those people who are complaining and saying, oh, I went to this ministry, I was there 10 years. I went to this ministry, I was there 10 years. Sit here and calculate three months. Three months. And tell me if your life would have not changed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. If this ministry has been to, of impact to you, raise up your hand. You who has come, look around you. Look around you. Praise the Lord. So I started to notice one thing. Sometimes the situations that cause us to lose peace, it's because we have lost the vision with which we were called for righteousness. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you have lost that vision. The Bible says, where the vision is not, men cast off restraint. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Can I have this in New King James Version? New King James. The Bible says, where there is no revelation, eh? the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. What does it mean to cast off restraint? To cast off restraints, restraints means you want to see, but in the path of sight, there is a block. There is darkness. There is hindrance. You can't see. Why can't you see? Because there is no revelation. But the more I get to the word of God, I study it and I start to understand, oh God, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. My God, my God, my God. I am born of God. Hey. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. My God. Greater is he that is in me than the one that is in the world. Do you know, just declaring those words, they start to cast off a certain vision. They take off the darkness. You start to see your way. Why? Because as a man of peace, peace is not just a calm situation. But peace becomes a guiding light. You must see where you're going. You must see where you're going. Praise the Lord. So in those times, you want to refresh your vision. You want to go to the word. Let that revelation hit your spirit. You want to go to the Fanero app and search out the word and sit and feast. Praise the Lord. As you do, things become clearer and clearer. Please give us this scripture in the amplified version. Amplified. The Bible says, where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God. My father usually says that revelation is for redemption. Once it comes in your spirit, hey, my God. You go to another level. You're not the same man. Revelation is just not seeing a nice word in the Bible. It is Christ revealed. The Bible says, where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. Why are people perishing? There is no revelation. Revelation for your vision. You must see and accurately. Praise the Lord. When somebody tells you, hey, your business is failing, get to the word and get a revelation. Go to divine providence, six of them. Start to search out the matter. Start to check out until that vision is birthed. Once the vision has come, once the revelation has come in the inside of you, it's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. That is why when you meet somebody and somebody is telling you, I have no hope. They are trying to tell you, I have no vision. 
I have no negative imagination. I have no positive imagination. I've lost it. Praise the Lord. That is where you come in with the word. You don't join them in pity parties. No way. You get to the word and you tell them, my sister, let me show you what that says the Lord. That is where you send the sermon. You tell them, oh my God, my pastor preached this word. You need to hear it. Praise the Lord. Because to the degree that men are feasting is to the degree that I see. Praise the Lord. Paul is talking and he's saying one of his assignments was to make men see. To make men see. Why? Because there was a revelation of God given him. And when he will give it, men will see. He says, and to make all men see. To see what? What is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Somebody touch your head and say, I see, I see, I see. I have revelation, I see. Praise the Lord Jesus. Peace is your guiding light. Our father taught us about the seven guiding lights. And peace is one of them. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace that is drawn from a heart that has been established with grace. Why? Have you ever asked yourself why they had to put on the breastplate of righteousness? Did you ever ask yourself? Because one of the first attacks the enemy will want to put on your life is against your righteousness in God. He'll tell you you're not righteous. Look at you. Mm, you did this, mama. Look at you. Praise the Lord Jesus. That is why the breastplate of righteousness is there. And how do you use it? You say, oh no, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Every time a fiery dart or any time something is directed towards you, you go back to what the word of God says about you. That is what it means to hide in the presence of God. Hiding in his tabernacle. Hiding in his pavilion. You are hidden because of your wisdom in God. Praise the Lord Jesus. And let me tell you something interesting. The priests of old, they had an effort, right? On their priestly garments. But in the priestly garments, they used to put in something called an urim and a thummim. Those were like stones. Some people say stones, some people say they were engraved things that they used to put inside the, the effort. And it was here. They had to put them on every time they had to decide whether a matter was right or wrong. Can you imagine? So they will put them here and they will go to consult God for the people. When they hear it doing tea, they're like, hey, God has spoken. It is yes or it is no. That is why the Bible tells you that you must guard your heart with due diligence. Due diligence. Guard it. Because out of here flows out all the issues of life. Praise the Lord Jesus. All the issues of life flow from your heart. So the devil will look at you and start to attack you in your righteousness and say, Ah, you're not righteous. What shows you're not righteous? What shows you're righteous? He will start to attack you. Ah, what well, these the, things prove that you're not of God. Look at how you are. You, 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 you look, look, look. That is the reason as to why in this ministry we teach the grace of God. Because in that grace you're established in righteousness. You are. You can look back and say, No, I am anointed of God. I will not permit these situations. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when you look at the Bible, that's why now Paul starts to address people in a particular way when it comes to Philippians 4 verse 6. Look at what he says. He says, my brethren, be careful for nothing. Nothing. What is it that is troubling you? Be, do not be careful for it. Guys, you don't know how it is punishes the devil to give him no attention. That's the worst punishment. 
like things are going haywire and you're like, no, I'll not mind it. It's just like a child who's busy throwing tantrums and is seeking attention and you just keep walking. You're like, I'll not look there. Praise the Lord Jesus. When those things come, the Bible says, be careful for nothing. Don't give them attention. Don't mind them. My father taught and said, whatever it is you give your attention to, you empower. You ignite it. Praise the Lord. He says, be careful for nothing. How do I live a life that is careful of nothing? He says, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, making my requests known unto God. Let me show you in the message version what it says. Message. Message. The Bible says, don't fret or worry. That's not your level. Eh? Don't do it. Instead of worrying, what should you do? Let petitions and prayers shape up your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Verse 7. It says, And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Message. It says, Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness. Hey. Everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It is wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. It is wonderful what happens. It is wonderful what happens. Praise the Lord Jesus. So you refuse. You say, "Ah, uh -uh. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have the kingly anointing. Whatever it is that I need has been provided for. I refuse to worry. You are a king firstly because you have a domain. Dominion is what makes you the king. You are a king and a priest unto God. So you look at it and say, no, 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 no. And the Bible says, before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness. Everything coming together for good will come and do what? And settle you down. Oh my God. It is wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Wonderful. Praise the Lord Jesus. That is why when Paul was talking to the Colossian church. He told them something. He said, let peace rule your hearts. Let it. Let it. It means, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let, when you look at the Greek meaning of that word let, it says be an umpire. Be an umpire. Don't just allow things to enter and come out of your heart the way they want, the way they want to come in, the way they want to go out. This one says this, it comes in, it goes out, it comes in. And you are always in a state of lack of peace. Eh? It says be an umpire. An umpire is like a referee. I have a red card and I'm seated at the door of my heart. I can blow it and say, Pee, enter, you get out. That is the power that God has given you. Be an umpire. The Bible says, and let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ, rule. Let it act as an umpire continually. That one says, that one says let the peace be the umpire. KJV says, you be the umpire. Praise the Lord. Allow peace to be the umpire. Do you know what it means to carry the peace of God as the umpire in your heart? It means it is seated there. It is the one which allow only thoughts, feelings, and emotions that work for your progress. Anything lower than that outside. Outside. 
Let it allow. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is not a life for, for uh, struggling for things. Uh -uh. If God wants you in a particular state, he says, let it. Let it. Let the peace. <laughs> Jesus looked at the disciples and says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You don't let it. Don't. Don't. Don't let your hearts be troubled. It's there. It says. Mm -mm, not that one. It says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Hmm? It's here. It says, peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Those thoughts of peace that God is meditating on you. Wholeness. Increase. Not as the world giveth. God will outdo every time the highest merit the world will ever give you. He says, peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world does what? Giveth, give I unto you. So let not, let not, eh, eh, let not. He's not saying, I will come and, I, and me and the Holy Spirit, we shall help you to let not. No, no. You, let not, you. Take some responsibility. Take charge of your house. Rule over your home. Let not. Not I will send a preacher who will come into your house. Then you will pray for three hours. Then we, no, 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 no. You, 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 you. Personal responsibility. Let's look at this in the Amplified. You will love it. It says, and let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ. No, 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 no. It says, peace I live with you. My own peace I now give and do what? Guys, do you know what it means to carry the peace of God? Jesus says, my peace I give you. Did you take it? Do you have it? He said, peace I live with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you not as the world gives do i do what give to you do not let do not let your hearts be troubled do and, and neither let them to be afraid oh i really feel afraid do not do not you are the one allowing it he's saying do not let them don't let them don't let them talk to your heart don't let it don't let my heart don't be we're sorting a don't it be, don't, don't. Praise the Lord. It says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't let it. Neither let them be afraid. Hmm? Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. Eh, eh. Allowing yourself all the time to be sorrowful. To be the Bible says, don't. It is you allowing yourself. That's the language. Stop allowing yourself to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful. <sighs> Listen to the talk of righteousness. Like you can permit it. It says don't permit it. Do not permit yourselves to be fearful, intimidated, cowardly and unsettled my god praise the lord these are permissions by you why because as far as you're concerned god is looking at you as the biggest steward of the things that enter and come out of your heart you praise the lord you are the steward so sometimes when people are praying, they're saying, Father, don't allow this situation to mock me. Father, God, don't allow this people. He's not allowing. You are permitting. Weren't we told that the righteous, they are as bold as a lion? 
You are permitting agitation. Praise the Lord. Look at, look, look, look at the Hebrew children that were being taken to the fire, to the fiery furnace. They had, they had either to permit it or not permit it. They could say, ha, ah, you guys, do you know how fire feels on the flesh? Hey, 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 hey. Do you know how it burns? Have you seen how it quenches meat? And that is my body? No way. They would have even hidden and we would have not been told anything about them. But they said, we shall not bow. They had to permit something. Praise the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the Lord, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this. Banange, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, <laughs> if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. The next verse. But if not, hey, made up minds, I'll not permit it. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Hey, it's up to you. Up to you. Permission. So go back and check your heart. Align it to the scriptures that God is talking to you concerning righteousness. Check. Are you permitting or are you trying to say the devil is stronger? Eh? Yeah? Are you permitting or the devil is strong? Somebody said, don't talk about the devil like that. You know the devil can do something. You know the devil can do something. Hey, the devil can do. Hey, he can do what? 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 What can he do? That is why the only thing he's remaining with are what? Wiles. What are wiles? Tricks. Let me tell you. Can someone who is more powerful than you trick you? If I'm more powerful than you and I want to hit your head, I just hammer it. You don't need anything to do with it. But if I know that you are more powerful, I'll come and start to suggest. Do you really think you're powerful? Do you really think? Why is he suggesting? Because his beguiling has never stopped. He's just where he's like, my God, this guy is anointed, but let me try. Let me use the back door. Then you wake up in the morning and your boss is all like. Praise the Lord Jesus. But we know him. We know of his tricks. We know of his cunning devices. We know. We know. And we know that he has no power. The Bible says that all power is of God. We are not ignorant of his devices. Hallelujah. We know. We know. We know. When Jesus died and he said it is finished, he had disarmed the devil. This is not something he's planning and intending to do again. He's not going to do it again. The Bible says he shamed him. He triumphed all over. He shamed... Hey, praise the Lord. The Bible says, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them, triumphing over them. He got the devil, taught him a, a serious lesson. When he was done, he had to show everyone in the multitude. Are you seeing this dude? I dealt with him. You, you're saying, ah, but he has power. 
but he has power. He has some kapawa. Some, some kapawa. He has no power. He has nothing. For this reason was the Son of God manifested. That he may do what? That he may destroy the works of the devil. That is not a continuous plows. It was done. Was the Son of God manifested? If he was, he dealt with the devil. He destroyed his works. So you will tell me, but why are men cast down? Why do men look oppressed? Why do men matter? Partnership. The devil is saying, I'm not strong, but you, you are saying, but you're strong. The devil is saying, I'm not strong. I think after this service, he's going to report to me and say, Mama, the, the, I'm not strong, but you see those people think I'm strong. Refuse it, he's not strong. I don't care your doctrines and your religions. We care what the word of God says. The works of the devil were destroyed. They were rendered powerless, null, void. There's nothing he can do. That is why now the battles that you are remaining with are those things in the mind. In the mind. In the mind. They are called strongholds. Those things that were sown in your mind. Strongholds. Those things that stay there and they resist you from becoming the person, the child of God that God anointed you to be strongholds praise the lord strongholds those are the ones which make you wake up and you're like hey but if my grandmother my grandmother was was having a situation with her back my auntie has it my uncle carried it no strongholds not generational curses your mind is undergoing something And still, whether they be strongholds or not, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they are not what? They are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. What do they do? To the pulling down of strongholds. They pull down strongholds. Those weapons that you have. How do you pull down strongholds? You get the word in your mouth. Hey! The word in your mouth is your sword. You pull it out. You pull out the sword and say, I am anointed. I am righteous. I am going far. Hey! I am of God. I am born of God. My God. I am born of the imperishable seed, which is the word of God. I cannot fear. Fear is of the devil. I am bold, as bold as the... Hey! Hey! If you've been having those generational issues of backs, you touch that back and you say, my back is anointed for purpose. For as long as I'm alive to fulfill the purposes of God, my back is strong. My legs are strong. My eyes are strong. My ears are hearing. Hey, for as long as I'm alive, I am healthy. You pull out the sword. The Bible says as you do that, the peace of God will garrison your mind and your heart. Do you know what that means? The peace of God will guard like the way a military guard does it. It becomes an umpire. It watches around. It's like, who's that talking? Who's that talking? Your boss is saying you're incompetent. Hey! I am competent in the competence of God. And Fanero people, we don't just say I'm competent. You demonstrate it. You go to work early. Dress nicely. You do overtime. You love your boss. You buy him gifts. You celebrate his birthday. Even when he has chosen that he will be mounted, you celebrate. Praise the Lord. 
Listen, the Bible says, and, the, and God's peace shall be yours. That tranquil state of a soul, a soul that is assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot, whatsoever sort it is. That peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison, mount guard over your heart and what? If it is the stronghold of the mind, you put it down with the sword of the spirit. If it is in the heart, you speak to your heart. You speak to your heart. How do you speak to your heart? The way you speak other things. You get the word of God and you sit down. And you say, my heart, today I have something I want to assure you about. And unless the heart is convinced, you don't go away. You tell the heart, you know, I was reading yesterday in Colossians 3, verse 3. The Bible told me that my life is hid with Christ in God. Why are you worrying? You worry about what? What's wrong with you? Eh? The Bible says that I am hid in Christ. What's wrong with you? The Bible says that God shall supply all my needs according to his. What is wrong with you? The talk and talk and talk, 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 talk. Praise the Lord Jesus. When you're done, that peace fills your heart. Now you're in the realm of rest. When you're in the realm of rest, rest bathes anything. Rest is that place where you have convinced yourself of who you are in the word of God and what it has said about you. It bathes what they call willingness. You're willing. You're willing. Praise the Lord. You are garrisoned. You're guarded. Nothing shakes you anymore. Can you imagine a man saying, even if they remove this earth, oh my God, my business will continue. I will continue to be rich. I'll continue to be successful. I'll continue to go higher and higher. Nothing shakes me. Hey, even if Mount Renzori shakes, shakes, shakes and shakes and throws itself wherever it runs, who cares? I am rich. I am prosperous. I don't care its effects. It has no effect on me. Why? Because the effects on me are the effects of righteousness. Quietness and assurance forever. Forever. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I feel the anointing of God in this place. And that is why when you look at the Bible, you notice that God had to make peace a covenant. Why? It matters to him a lot that you are at peace. A lot. That he noticed, no, this person will be troubled. Even Jesus said it. He said, in this earth you will be troubled. You will be troubled. Eh, you will face tribulation. You will be troubled. People will, eh, things, what? Eh. It says, these things have spoken unto you, that in me you might have what? Peace. In the world you shall have tri eh, tribulation. But be of good cheer, my God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I fear for nothing. He says, be of good cheer. This one now they are not telling you to be of good courage. Be of good cheer. This is going on but you put on nice lotion. Ladies, you perfume yourself. You put on nice clothes. You go to office, you're like, my God, things are good. Hey! My God, my God. You meet somebody, you give them the highest high five. You're like, praise the Lord Jesus. Hey! Be of good cheer. Why? Because you carry the nature of God, the nature of peace. Galatians 5.22 The fruit of the spirit, peace. It is the character of God in the inside of you. You are righteous. Peace is yours. Praise the Lord. You don't weigh your head down because, oh, this one didn't do this, this one do this. That's why, as I was telling you, God committed himself that peace to him shall be a covenant with you. 
a covenant. And do you know what he had to do to get to that? Jesus was chastised for your peace. His suffering was not without your peace. He covered for it. The man of God put on thorns, a crown of thorns. Why was he putting on the crown of thorns in his head? Why his head? He knows where the strongholds are. Where are the challenges are? Here. So when he noticed, he said, Nyabo, let me also cover that one for you. I'll put it on my head. Once it pricks me and that blood goes, blood goes down, you are not permitted to have any thoughts of worry. You are not permitted. Isaiah 54 10. Listen, as I close. Oh my God, my time is fast spent. It says, For the mountains shall depart. Are we back to mountains? Renzori. For the mountains shall depart and the hills shall be removed. But my kindness, my kindness, hey, my thoughts of peace, my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall my covenant of peace be removed. Who is removing it? Hey, he said, neither shall my covenant of peace be removed. Says the Lord that has mercy on you. Touch that heart and say, I'm at peace. It's a big issue for God. He had to covenant himself in it. He had to punish Jesus for it. Praise the Lord. A big issue. So don't permit. Don't. Eh? You remember the list? Don't allow. The power to not is the power that the grace of God has given you because you are a child of God. Because you are the righteousness of God. These are the thoughts that God has for you. The thoughts of peace. Praise the Lord. Listen to what Jesus said in Amplified. John 14, 27. He said, My peace I leave with you. My own peace I now bequeath you. Hey. I don't want to give you the way the world gives. Do you know how the world gives peace? When everything is going on nicely. Oh, I'm at peace. When people are not quarreling in the house, my God, the house is peaceful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's not the peace of God. The peace that God has given us works itself from the inward to the outward. When you are peaceful in the inside, it starts to command the very same atmosphere outwardly. Praise the Lord. Someone will say, but now what? Yes, even if it is sickness. Sickness is this is. There is no is inside. When the is comes to the heart, the is will come outside. This is will go. Simple. I don't know how you understand your English. Me, that's how I understand mine. Praise the Lord. Things are simple. I don't know why we like complicating. So stop allowing yourselves. Praise the Lord. Somebody just rise on your feet and love on God. Love on God. Start to see those visions that provide for peace. Start to see those visions that provide for peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start to see those visions that provide for peace. You know, in Joshua 6, <laughs> these people had a feat and it was supposed to bring down the wall. And that wall was blocked. No one could go in and no one could go out. But the Bible says something. When he was talking to Joshua, he said, See that I have given you that place. See that I've given it to you. It only had to take Joshua to see. I want you to see the things that have provided for your peace. As you do, many of you are going to notice that's how quickly you're going to start operating in your ministry. That's how you're going to have a free and flowing relationship with God. God has these thoughts towards you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Somebody close your eyes and let's play. Lift up those hands if you want to. 
see something. Get a vision. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Mashanda kalebre karaba kazata barade. Shende katala braka raba kasata kapaye. Randa kashete kelebre karabayanda. This is an opportunity to address anything that has not been working for peace. I feel the anointing and the atmosphere right here. That whatever it is, be it in your family, be it in your body, be whatever situation it is, you are the righteousness of God. Speak it. Shete kelebre kerebayanda. Address it right now. Mashanda katele prekere baka zanda katala baka labaye. Somebody pray. Shida baka tala braka rabayanda. Masande ketele prekere preka shata baye. My God, we thank you for peace. We thank you for peace, oh God. Shata kale preka rabayanda. The peace that guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. We refuse to fear. We refuse worry. We are the righteousness of God. We are at peace with God. Somebody pray in this place. I feel something. Janda katala braka rabayanda, mashike tele prekere bosta. Somebody five minutes pray, 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 pray. Speak to that situation, address that matter, whatever it is. Shanda katele prekere bayanda, enter the realm of authority as a king. Sata kapele prekatayaba, start to align, 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 align that job, align that home, align that child, align that nation, align that city. Ukraine will speak to you today. We speak to Ukraine that there shall be peace. Le paka shitaka. We call a forth an end of that war. My God, we say thank you that it is finished. Le paka siketekele prikaraba. Speak, speak to your world. Align that situation and circumstance. La kashitekele prikarabayanda. We are going forward. We are going forward. Le paka shendeka. Forward in the life of God. Forward in the wisdom of God. La paka shete kele prekara bayanda forward in the power of God. I don't hear you saints. You carry the power, address it, speak to it, speak to yourself, speak to the situation, speak to your life that you will be indeed everything that God revealed to you. Shaka takata, speak to yourself. Say, I am the world greatest evangelist, I am the world greatest prophet, I am the world greatest pastor. The peace of God has provided for this, nothing can stop me. Seleba, Shekata Kaleba Kalande, Makare Prekara Baka Sile Pakata, Repaka Shiketele Prekere Bosta. Come on, somebody speak, speak, speak. Lepaka Shata Kalabraka. No power, no weapon formed against you can prosper. Nothing can stand in the way of God for your life in the vision of God, for your life in the dream of God, for your life. Repa Shataye, Shanda Kata Kata, Lepaka. Somebody pray, somebody pray. I feel something. I feel something. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. I see somebody's shoes. Shoes for the gospel of peace being anointed. You're being anointed for your assignment. Because you carry the gospel of peace. Shibagade kata. Come on, somebody pray, 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 pray. One minute, he shall have a cate. Reka sata kale prekere bayanda. Lika seketele prekere bosta. Open that mouth and speak. Say, I'm going far. I am scaling walls. Lepakasha. I am taking the world by the gospel. Sheketa. I am shaking the nations. Lempaka because I am at peace. Lipaka sheketelepa. Landeke preka. I don't hear somebody. Shataka le prekere bayanda. Touch that head. Speak to yourself. How anointed you are. How the womb. Shiketeke talaba. Raka soke pakasula pakate. Sharapakatea. Masambreke. 
ke sota brako shie ke ta lando kapasike shaka takala my god i see an anointing in this place ipaka sheta my sister receive it i see a quickening lepaka because you have come to the understanding of peace you're quickened in your assignment you're quickened yeke pala kasola paye receive 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 A quickening. The spirit says a quickening. The spirit says a quickening. A quickening. I see the wind of the spirit quickening you to your godly mandate. Because of the peace of God in your heart. A quickening. A quickening. Ladies, women, a quickening. A quickening. A bathing. The things that you have been carrying in your heart for months upon months, hey, quickening because of the peace of God. Let us receive it. La pakashindaka, man of God, receive it. Women of God, receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give the Lord a mighty, mighty hunger. the Lord if you are not born again you will not understand the peace that God given oh I feel something here I feel something here permit me I feel something here there is a weight God shall not allow your words to go down to the ground whatever it is you have fixed right now it is fixed you are the child of peace. Listen to me. Please don't walk out. Give me a minute. If you are here and you are not born again, my brother, my sister, you have not yet understood the peace that we are talking about. I'd like to give you a minute to come, uh, to come here, to come in front and give your life to Jesus how many are there and they want to give their lives to Jesus let me see by show of hands yes follow those hands and just come here let's pray for you I see those hands please come come in front please come in front I see those hands come in front don't fear come and receive this peace come and receive this everlasting joy Come and receive Jesus, the author of peace, the Prince of Peace. Please come and receive Jesus. Don't allow this moment to pass you by. This is your time. This is your season. This is your hour. Please come. receive Jesus I see some people coming in the back please clap for them as they come come and receive Jesus come and know the peace of God and you tired of those things Jesus wants to sort them come and receive Jesus please clap for them as they come we are still waiting for you. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Please clap for them as they are coming. I still see some people at the back there coming. Somebody don't hold back. I feel in my heart that there's still people at the back who want to come. Come and receive Jesus. Seated in majesty. Come and receive Jesus. Somebody keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. 
My sister, you can still come. Come and receive Jesus. Death could not hold him down. at the back who wants to receive Jesus. Come and receive Jesus. Come, come, come. Don't battle it out. Just come. coming please give me some minutes I still see people coming please come come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior I still see people coming please let's continue worshiping oh hallelujah Jesus don't resist please clap for them don't resist don't resist this is an opportunity for your life if you're here let's pray repeat this prayer after me and after this prayer you are born again the God of peace dwells in the inside of you after this prayer forget your struggles you start a walk with God. We are going to take down your names right there. So when you're done here, please make sure you move right there so we can take down your names. It helps us follow you up so that we can help you grow. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you today in my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I am born again. I am born again. I am the child of God. I am a son of God. In Jesus' name. If you have said that prayer, you are born again. <laughs> Lift up your hands and let me pray for you. Lift up your hands and let me pray for you. There's somebody who was just walking. Ashes, please help me to pray with those people that are walking in. There's about one, two, three, four, five. Get them get them to a pastor and lead them to a confession prayer let me pray for you father in jesus name we thank you lord my god for this your children oh god 
thank you for the peace in their hearts that they are feeling right now some of them are already even speaking in tongues receive it in the name of jesus thank you for the peace that floods their hearts right now thank you for the joy that floods them right now thank you lord my god that they are free from the guilt of this world father they are walking in constant fellowship with you and divided attention with you oh god because of what you have done with them because of what you have done in them oh god thank you jesus that as you dwell in them richly oh god their hearts are filled with peace their minds are filled with peace their situations oh god are nothing to them because you are god to them thank you lord in jesus name we have prayed please you could go there if you are sick in your body receive your healing it doesn't matter the sickness walk out of this ground healed don't allow don't let don't let and for all of you thank you very much for coming it's the end of service this broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International for more information about the great work of God visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at fenero.org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Fenero, make manifest.